She is without doubt one happy elephant. Outside, it's the hottest day of the year. But inside, there's a tub big enough for one. Come on. It's 100 degrees, for God's sakes. Want to know what makes an elephant happy? Stick around. What a good girl. Tika! Tika! Tika, let go! Her name is Tika, and she is undoubtedly one of Canada's most famous elephants. Born into captivity at the Toronto Zoo, today she roams a sanctuary that could be the savanna of southern Africa. Tika! Hurry up! Good, good girl. The tale of how Tika got here and what's about to happen to her is an elephant story you won't see anywhere else. Way up, way up, Tika. How'd you get to be so beautiful? What a good girl. What a good girl. And it all began three years ago at the zoo in Toronto. Tika and her colleagues, Toka and Oringa, were Toronto's last remaining elephants. Born to walk over 20 kilometers a day, here they were confined to a compound of less than two acres, most of it concrete. The largest animals on earth may also be the least suited to captivity with consequences like this. Oh my God. Video from a number of years ago shows the elephants at the Toronto Zoo, among them Tika, Toka, and Oringa, in a high state of anxiety, confronting each other with tusks. Not sound good. And apparently it wasn't the first time. Weighing twice as much as your car, as tall as the room you're in, captive elephants can do damage to one another that rarely, if ever, happens in the wild. I'm so scared of it. In 2013, the zoo agreed it was time for Tika, Toka, and Oringa to go. That October, Fifth Estate cameras were invited along to record the big move, something never done before. Three four-ton elephants heading 4,000 kilometers from Toronto to San Andreas, California to the sanctuary for animals retired from zoos and circuses, run by the Performing Animals Welfare Society, known as PAWS. Nice game, we're looking to help you. When the elephants reached California from Canada, there was relief, but also apprehension about what might happen next. Indeed, on that first night, the Paws elephants stayed up for the newcomers, trumpeting and bellowing. But was it a welcome or a warning? No one could be sure, at least not yet. Once inside the barn, separated from the others, Toka and Oringa quickly settled in. But watch here in the dark as the youngest new arrival, Tika, refuses to leave her steel shipping crate until long after midnight, anxious and alone, a possible sign of trouble to come. Melding the herds would be the first priority. The last time Paz faced this challenge was close to 10 years ago when an elephant named Maggie arrived from an Alaska zoo where she'd been living by herself. She seemed positively giddy to get here, but would she fit in? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Maggie, that's good. That's, that's good. <laughs> this is video of that moment of truth. Maggie's introduction to her new family her first contact with her own species for almost a decade. Maggie, the smallest one on the right, approaches the others cautiously, as pachyderms do, rear end first. That was back in 2008. Today, there's no doubt the family has bonded. The sanctuary's executive director is Ed Stewart. What's the litmus test when they come here? 
Well, when they lie down and sleep, that makes, makes you feel that they're comfortable. That's one of the goals, to get them to sleep, to get down on the ground, either to wallow in mud or put themselves in a vulnerable position with the other elephants. Here, Mara and Lulu stand guard as Maggie takes a nap. In October 2013, on their first morning at Paws, Ed Stewart had hopes all would go just as well for the animals from Canada. Tika started out where she'd left off the night before, anxious, alone, just outside the barn. But Toka and Oringa were off exploring. They'd spent decades on two acres of concrete at the Toronto Zoo. At Paws, there are more than 2,000 acres of rolling hills and vegetation, 90 of them reserved just for the female African elephants. For Toka and Oringa, a chance to try out muscles they hadn't used in a very long time. Toka and Oringa immediately discovered grazing. They walked past a, a small patch of grass and both stopped and ate every bit of it. Elephants age dramatically in captivity. At the zoo, Toka and Oringa were described as elderly, but Paws seemed to give them a whole new lease on life. Funnily enough, Oringa was the boldest of all. The oldest one, it almost looked like she looked back at us and said, okay, I get it, I get it. I can go anywhere I want here, I can eat the leaves, I can eat the grass, and I'll see you later. That difference between the three Toronto elephants is understandable. Toka and Oringa were born in the wild in Africa, then sold into captivity at about the age of two. So they had at least some family upbringing. But Tika was born at the Toronto Zoo. No one ever taught her to be an elephant. A lot of times in captivity, the elephants understand the humans. They understand their relationship to humans. Sometimes they don't understand their normal relationship to other elephants. And, and you can see it. You can just see some confusion. You can just see there they don't know how to act. It's uh, a challenge sometimes. So we go slow. Since we first visited in 2013, some things have changed for the Toronto elephants. The elderly Oringa died. And meanwhile, Toka has earned her place in the Paz family unit. Toka, let go. Come on. Come on, let's go. The upside is uh, Toka it has fit right in, and she is a part of the group now. And I think that's really good for her. You'll see. We'll see, we'll, we'll, let, we'll let Toka go out where she normally is with these guys. In addition to sleeping, another test of how well elephants are doing is being comfortable enough to urinate in front of the others. Peeing is a big part of greeting. <laughs> On that, Toka is apparently very comfortable indeed. What a good girl. But for Tika, even an experienced elephant whisperer like Ed Stewart couldn't make her integration happen any faster. When we recently returned to Paws, almost three years after the Toronto elephants arrived, Tika was still kept separated from her would-be family. Did you believe this process would still be going on today in 2016? Yeah, yeah I, I, I would have. There are places that have elephants separated that never get them together. Yeah. And, or that, that live together and then have to separate them. I would have believed any scenario anybody came up with. But there was always the lingering question, what to do about Tika? Since she arrived, she's been close to the others, but always with that fence in between. Ed Stewart says a miscalculation literally could be a matter of life or death. The mistakes could be anything from an elephant being mentally damaged, just worried about uh, another elephant hurting her or chasing her or, or um, just uh, mental stress. And then there's physical injury. I mean, it could easily, you know, one of the elephants could injure another elephant. Or kill. Or kill it. 
I mean, you, you, it's happened before. They are sociable, they are intelligent, but above all, elephants are unpredictable. The very first time Tika was allowed in with the others at Paz, this is what she saw of them as they all fled away from her, up and over the hill and out of sight. Now, weeks later, Ed Stewart is about to open the gate and try again. Watch Tika as she moves towards the others. The key this time will be how she interacts with Mara, the matriarch of the family of female African elephants at Paz. Tika and Mara have, you know, knock on wood, everybody has been really, really calm, really nice. And, and it's going, you know, you just go slowly and, and you watch for little signs, you feed them and keep control as much as possible for a little while and then you back up and see what they do. And look who's coming and see who comes over to see who and if there's anything we need to adjust, we try to adjust it. Indeed, on this summer day in 2016, it seems it may just work out after all. Yeah, so far so good. You know, it's kind of dull. <clears throat> dull is good. <laughs> And as with many human families, Tika, eating together is another test. You know, it's called cooperative feeding. It's a way of socializing them. And so they all know everybody's gonna get something, everything is good. To an elephant expert, it is all a behavioral ballet, a kind of pachyderm pas de deux, where dull and boring are exactly what you want. See, it's nice and relaxed. The only thing we try to do is give them an opportunity to act like an elephant. Touching each other, smelling each other, any, any and all orifices. <laughs> and this time, no one runs away. Now, Mora, Maggie, Lulu, and their cousins from Canada, Toka and Tika, are together at last. Finally, one big happy family.